you're in your cozy kitchen, preparing a delicious meal. But suddenly, disaster strikes, the sizzle turns into a crackle, and flames engulf your stovetop. A home fire can be a terrifying experience. That's why today, we're here to guide you through the process of getting fire insurance for your home in the United States. So, if you've ever wondered how to protect your most valuable asset, stay tuned. Have you ever thought about what would happen if your home went up in flames? How would you recover? Well, that's where fire insurance comes in. Let's dive into the nitty gritty and learn how to safeguard your home against fire damage. Step 1 Understand Fire Insurance Fire insurance covers damages to your home, other structures on your property, and your personal belongings caused by fire. It may also provide coverage for additional living expenses if you can't stay in your home during the repairs. Now, here's the good news. Most homeowners insurance policies already include fire damage coverage. However, if you reside in fire-prone areas, such as regions with frequent wildfires, you might need to purchase a separate policy. Step 2. How Fire Insurance Works Fire insurance typically covers fires resulting from faulty wiring, electrical issues, gas explosions, and certain natural disasters like lightning strikes. However, if you live in an area prone to wildfires, there may be some coverage limitations. In the unfortunate event of a fire, it's crucial to file a claim promptly. Take detailed photos of the damage, determine the cause of the fire, and assess the extent of the damage. Don't forget to make a list of the belongings you've lost. It's important to note that fire insurance does not cover fires caused by war, nuclear contamination, radiation, or arson. Step 3. Replacement Cost versus Actual Cash Value Now, let's talk about an essential consideration when it comes to fire insurance, replacement cost versus actual cash value. If your home is completely destroyed by a fire, you may be reimbursed based on either the replacement value or the actual cash value of your home and belongings. Actual cash value coverage reimburses you for the worth of your items at the time of the fire, considering depreciation. Keep in mind that this might result in a lower payout, and you may need to cover the difference to replace your items. On the other hand, replacement cost coverage provides reimbursement for the cost of new items of similar quality, even if the original items had decreased in value over time. While replacement cost coverage offers more protection, it often comes with higher premiums. Step 4. Assessing Your Coverage Needs Now, let's determine if you need to add extra fire coverage. There are several situations where you might consider extending your coverage. First, if your home is older, adding building codes coverage can be beneficial. This coverage helps cover the additional costs of bringing your older home up to current building codes after a fire. Secondly, if your home has unique or rare features that would be challenging to repair or replace, you may want to explore extended replacement cost coverage. This coverage accounts for increased demand and rising costs associated with specialized labor and building materials after a fire. Moreover, if you have valuable items like smartphones, bikes, or camping equipment that exceed the limits of your policy, consider extending your personal property coverage. Standard policies often have limits on jewelry coverage, so if you have valuable jewelry, purchasing additional jewelry insurance might be a wise decision. Lastly, if you're concerned about maintaining your standard of living after a fire, consider extending the limits of coverage for additional living expenses. This is especially important if you have a large family or specific needs that would increase your cost of living during the recovery period. Step 5. Homeowners Insurance in Fire-Prone Areas Living in a fire-prone area presents unique challenges when it comes to fire insurance. In some regions where the risk of wildfires is higher, your standard homeowner's insurance policy may not provide coverage for fires. In such cases, you'll need to purchase a separate fire insurance policy. This is often the situation for areas near canyons, far from fire departments, or where wildfires are common. One option to explore is a fair access to insurance requirements, fair, plan, 
which offers fire insurance coverage even if you don't qualify for private insurance. Step 6. Fire Insurance Coverage for Rentals If you're a landlord, your landlord insurance typically covers the building, other structures on the property, personal property within the unit, such as appliances, and liability coverage for tenant injuries. On the other hand, tenants should consider renter's insurance, which covers their personal belongings and additional living expenses if they need to relocate due to a fire. Congratulations! You've just learned how to navigate the world of fire insurance for your home. Remember, a fire can happen when least expected, but being prepared and having the right coverage can make all the difference. Make sure you understand the coverage offered by your homeowner's insurance policy and assess if additional fire insurance is necessary based on your specific circumstances. Keep in mind factors such as replacement cost versus actual cash value, your home's age and customization, valuable belongings, and the unique risks of your location. By taking these steps and practicing fire safety measures, such as installing smart home smoke detectors and having a fire extinguisher, you can protect your home and loved ones. Stay safe, and may your home always be a haven of warmth and security. Thanks for watching. If you found this guide helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe for more valuable insurance tips.